In our second video, you learned three best practices for naming digital files. This video will build on these elements and go further in explaining how to best name your files. Afterwards, you should be able to identify the most appropriately named file from a list of options. You will want to begin incorporating separators into your digital naming practices. Separators do exactly what it sounds like. They separate information within your file names. The underscore is one of the most practical separators used to divide different attributes of a file. For example, you may have several images of your black lab that you want to organize. Using an underscore will aid in this process. While using separators is important, they should only be used when necessary. For example, you do not need to use separators between keywords when you can use mixed case to keep words from running together. When you make many edits to one file, you can quickly lose track of the original contents. You can avoid this hassle by saving changes to a different file and indicating the file's version in its name. You can use numbers or letters to increment versions, such as by using underscore ver01 or underscore ver capital A. If editing photos, you can use a brief description of the edit to distinguish it from the original, such as underscore crop or underscore BW. If you are working collaboratively on a file, you can use contributors' initials to keep track of the file version. You want to avoid using generic words like revision, final, or even worse, final final, because these become confusing very quickly. For instance, you might want to work with the original photo instead of an edit. When working with documents, you may need to refer to previous versions of your text. When working collaboratively, you may want to keep your ideas from being permanently overwritten by your partner. As mentioned in the second part of this series, you will be able to sort files more efficiently if you use a consistent file naming pattern. This means similar files will group together and you will be able to find and work with files faster. You might consider including these file attributes. Subject or keywords, for example, black lab sitting or border collie jumping. Creation date, using the year, 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 month, month, day, day format. And version. Whatever attributes you include should be used for all files in that folder, and they should always appear in the same order. The point of including file attributes is to make file names more intelligible to both you and your computer. Remember, help your computer help you by using a consistent file naming scheme. Let's run through a list of file names and why they are good or not. DSC01995874.jpg is bad because there is no distinguishing name. It would be difficult to find. Blacklab1.jpg is okay, but it contains spaces. Black and yellow labs.jpg is better because there are no spaces, but it contains the ampersand special character. Blacklab01.jpg is good and follows best practices, but it might be difficult to find if you have a large number of black lab pictures. Blacklab sitting underscore crop underscore 2016 is the best because it contains keywords, version, and creation date all of which help the computer sort it efficiently, especially within a large cluster of similarly named files. A group of similarly named and sorted files might look like this. If you have followed the best practices outlined in this series of videos, you are now an expert in naming your files effectively and managing them is much easier.